Yes. 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 Oh, come on. Yes. Damn. Damn. I wanted to talk about physics randomly. I, don't, I, I know no one's going to listen. No one's going to care, but I'm going to make it. I want to just expand on an idea that I had that I thought was pretty good. I wrote it in my blog, but because because I put it in my blog. No one will read it. But I thought it was good enough to share, so let's do this. I was, because it's a beautiful thought, so the, that's why I want to share it. So, okay, so let's start with some basic Einstein. <laughs> well, it's not really basic Einstein, but it's, yeah, it's basic Einstein. There is no universal time. So, in essence, it means that places communicate to you their location but they communicate their location with their selves if you like via things so in the case of our world the 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 thing that communicates a lot of the information that we process if you like is light and photons so photons bounce around on the buildings and then come to your eye and tell you, ah, there is a building there. So what's actually happening is you're not seeing the building. You're seeing the photons that bounced on the building and they are telling you what the building was like just a little moment ago when the photon bounced on the building. So the shape of the buildings around you are made by the shape of the photons hitting your eye. And then the energy of the photons will create the color. And, well, um, I think so, yeah. I think it's the energy, yeah. I think if I'm not mistaken, because I'm still beginner, beginner physicist, okay? I remember beginner. Blurry pictures, blurry black hole pictures. And, and I wanted to expand on this idea a little bit. I'm walking in. I wanted to expand on this idea a little bit about the world communicating itself to you. I think we can get rid of the idea of time altogether and I think there's a good reason to do that so remember Einstein says that there is a sense of time it's just that everybody has a different idea of what that time is and I looked online a little bit and it seems as though people do not think like what I'm about to say so I think this is a new idea but I'm not too sure because I think it's very divisive there's a debate going on between a, two views of the world and one of them is called eternalism it sounds like a marvel movie but and the and the other is called presentism and the idea is some people think that only the present moment exists or at least that was that was the debate that only the present moment exists and that the geometry of the world evolves right now and the past is in your memory and the future is in your cap capacity to imagine. And other people think that eternalism is true and that the laws of physics, because everything is determined and there is no reason or at least no predominant reason for us to believe that things are just chosen randomly that we do still believe somewhat in determinism and that things happen for always, there's always a cause for everything. And so we can assume that if there's a cause for everything, then a cause causes another cause, causes another cause, causes another cause, and that that's all predetermined already. And that that exists in the world and that the world already all exists. And we just find ourselves in one slice, one slice of the world. This debate is rendered a little moot by what I just said earlier about Einstein. Because we already know that there is no present moment. So the universe cannot possibly be present and evolving currently. Right? Because there is no such thing as current. And so some people online, I noticed, are on a site called Atheism is the Best or Real Atheism or something like that. We're, uh, we're saying, well, eternalism is real. And they were debating some dude that I don't think understood special relativity very well. I didn't read it, I, to be honest. He seems very, the guy, the atheist dude writing the post seemed a bit upset, a bit too easily. So I was like, uh, 
This guy's probably not thinking too clearly. He's probably not very being very reasonable right now, which is a fair point, I think. Um, in establishing if someone can can be trustworthy. And so, I do not think that people have thought this through if they genuinely do believe that eternalism is like the way. And the reason is consciousness. I read a long time ago that, that there was no present moment, but this was different from Einstein. This was um, biological experiments on our brains that have shown that the way that we conceive of the present is actually not quite exact. It's just a bunch of general sensations that add up to what feels like the present on our scale, on our biological scale to us. And I thought, well, that's the answer is because if we remember that there is no Einsteinian sense of universal time and we take this experiment into account and then we know that determinism is real, that a cause causes another cause, causes another cause, then, then the reason why we are conscious is because eternalism is wrong and because only this conscious general moment exists. But remember, I just said there is no moment. So when I'm saying, I'm using time language to describe this thing, I'm saying the, this general moment exists. So if there is no such thing as a universal time, then what is this moment? I thought, well then, what actually exists? Because time is a, is a, is a concoction of our minds to explain how these locations with light, mostly for us, are communicating themselves to us, to our eyes. Shut up, train, come on, man. <laughs> so noisy. I'm so noisy too, so it's to be fair, I wanna be fair. It would seem that the best way to describe what's happening here is to talk about location and to say, well, okay, so this general moment is in fact a general connection of locations. Let's say two locations exist. They are made by the world. And so let's say, let's say two neurons con connect. They will send an electrical impulse both simultaneously for whatever prior reason, which was their circumstance. Those two impulses will happen to meet up at a new point, which will cause a new effect which will then become it could be a new neuron it could be at a new neuron in this case in this specific case but you could extrapolate that to mean for any physical event that exists it is the prior connection is the prior places that just happen to coincide to to send some physical particles their way those physical particles will happen to coincide in a place which will become a new cause and that the only thing that we can say truly exists is locality itself is the idea of a thing being a thing via some other things before it and that the betrayer of this process as opposed to the extrapolation that people are currently doing the extrapolation of saying that the laws of physics are laws and therefore must somehow show that it all exists at once uh, that the future and the past all exists in this giant loaf of bread and we just find ourselves on one slice of it or a complicated local slice according to Einstein if you like this would show that eternalism this idea is in fact wrong and the betrayer is consciousness it is our perception that is in fact not in the future and not in the past that is right here right now or at least as close to now as possible that is a bunch of general locations communicating to each other and giving off a general location to our selves which is a location we can in fact say that the world is only a bunch of geometry a bunch of location that communicates via a certain amount of locations and that the geometry of those locations is time itself because thanks to a specific geometry an effect will take a certain amount of time because of the geometry of the medium to get to you 
And so now you can just get rid of time. Time becomes space. It becomes geometry. And so you can just get rid of time entirely. And space, what is space? And this is building on another post that I wrote before that. Space is stuff. Space is just stuff. And the only way that something can communicate to you is via stuff. How else could they communicate? You could say, because right now people believe that there's a space time. I, I am not, I'm, uh, I don't think that's the end of the story, okay? I do believe that there's a, there's a specific way that, that uh, uh, something in space time can tell another part of the space time to do this and tell another part, tell another part. I personally believe, for my own personal reasons, and you, you don't have to, you don't have to believe it either. I. I, I would uh, share it, but I just, I just, I need to learn how to code, so it's beside the point. Oh, that's lovely. I think space is just stuff. Think of it this way. Space has to exist. Saying that space is just some construct called space-time, some canvas. How does that canvas have any ability to have space? What kind of, of, of pressure? exists the outward pressure of the local bit of space-time exists to make it space and not nothing and therefore have no bearing on an object trying to get from one place to another place what makes that space a space regardless of how you believe that the world is precisely made be it a space-time that is chopped up into pieces or actual particles that are some unknown geometry that we aren't yet aware of. That leads us to think that the only thing that exists is matter. You could say that time and space are emergent from existence itself and you don't even need to use them. You can, you, you, if you want to actually do some math, you'll have to use uh, units of space and units of time. But if you want to describe somehow you were looking for some some meaningful nature kind of explanation to the universe you could say that it was simply the thing right now i'm trying to explain dark matter and dark energy Dark matter, I actually have a weird idea about it. I think it's cool. I don't think anyone's gonna believe me, so I don't even just gonna bother trying to share it. And I know people watching right now thinking, okay, that's a bit weird. Kieran, there's a lot of physicists, blah, blah, blah. And I understand. You, you can think I'm crazy or not, it doesn't matter. But also I had a thought, I had to think about dark energy and I, I realized, I realized what this idea about space might mean. If there is no true space, and space is just stuff, then what is space expanding? And what is the cosmological constant, which is the idea that space is expanding at the constant rate, but then what is the accelerated added bit, which is the dark energy? And so you could infer from this, from this idea that space is technically something, that it is the effort to cross the space that it is the geometry of space itself or that energy its actual geometry that is making it more difficult for light to cross over to us you could say that you could say that space is not actually expanding but that it is getting richer with stuff or that the geometry of space, unbeknownst to us, because it perhaps it is a very, very energetic and fleeting geometry, but not fleeting enough for light, for photons, which are also extremely fleeting objects, those photons would have a harder time to cross. It's completely speculation, okay, guys? The, the point is, I'm thinking about this and I'm trying to think about it in different ways than just than just spitting out all the math. I do understand what the math says. I'm just not good at doing the math. If you listen enough, I think you can come up with some decent some 
decent ideas. So I just wanted to share that because I felt like it was a really beautiful idea. I don't think it's quite finished. I have a little bit to add. What would happen in an enriched space? A space that was for whatever reason getting richer and richer. I'm, give, I'm spilling all my secrets, guys. What would happen in that space? Things would have a harder time to cross from one place to the next. And you could, from a much larger perspective of this space, after a while, you could say perhaps that the space had little pockets of existence that were struggling to communicate with one another and that needed specific amount of energies to be able to cross over and you could actually create barriers between pockets of space that were too rich for certain things, certain effects to cross over. And that might be, that might be an explanation of the quantum world. And so what I currently am considering as a good theoretical foundation for some future mathematics that I would obviously have to try to do is that the world we live in is for a reason that i know and will not share right now enriching itself to the point of that one day it will seem to beings that are much larger and that are built on the interactions of this scale of existence will look at this world and look at and see it as quantized and this is exactly what we see. We look at a small world and see it as quantized because of some very small interactions that are causing the space between the formations that have happened to remain stable, which is the standard model, that have enriched the space between those formations that you can coalesce time and space into simply stuff communicating via other stuff locations talking to each other via locations but the only thing that currently exists for you and this is very true still and is builds on einstein it's very still einstein is still very true the only thing that exists for you is right here and now but your here and now is a collection of things that is not quite a here and now for those things and that it is a mixture of scales of existence that best describes what we are currently experiencing and what everything i suspect I presume, I suppose, what everything else is currently experiencing. And that it is the general cohesion and general similarity of all baryonic matter, all the stuff, the buildings, the, the bridges, that, that make it feel like a world. Because we're similar enough and our present moment is stable enough to be called the present. And I think that's where I'll leave it. I didn't want to talk this much. And I don't even know if I'm gonna upload this, but I think I should. I think it's only fair. Obviously, this is just ideas, so you do with them what you want. Uh, I'm gonna still try to be a musician, and I very much doubt that any of this will really um, have an impact. Maybe one day?